Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to record both yourself and your screen at the same time so that you can put together some really amazing video tutorials for your audience. Now, if you're like me and you're in the education space and you tend to share your screen a lot, being able to present in this manner is a very powerful tool to get your message across and to help educate your audience. And if you like the style of the talking, floating talking head thing that I've been doing in all of my videos where I have a custom border, I do different shapes, stick around to the end because I'll show you exactly how I make that in my video editing tool. And for those of you who I haven't met before, my name is Ty and on this channel, we do all things YouTube channel growth and monetization, but from a brand new creator's perspective. So if you yourself are new and you're just starting out and you wanna follow someone who's just a little bit ahead of you, you're in the right spot. Okay, as we jump in here, before we get to the demo, I just wanna high level for you guys some of the options that are available to you depending on what platform you're using. So if you're on Mac OS, the great news is you have QuickTime Player already pre-installed on your machine. It is a very lightweight and easy to use program. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, so you really can't get confused with it. And it'll do a really good job of recording your screen and recording your webcam or whatever video camera you have set up. And you can combine both of those things together to make a great video tutorial. Now for my Windows users out there, if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, sadly, Apple no longer supports QuickTime Player for Windows, but Windows does come with Xbox Game Bar, which you can use to record individual applications. So there's a slight drawback with the Game Bar because you can't actually record your full desktop as I understand it. You can though record specific applications. So maybe you're showing, hypothetically you're doing a, an Adobe tutorial, or maybe you're showing something in your Chrome browser, you can simply pull up those applications and record that application itself. Now, I don't have a Windows machine, so sadly I can't do a demo for you, but I'm told it's pretty easy to use. So give that a shot, Windows G, to get that started. Now, as we move into some of the paid services, these are both universal. You can use them on Mac and PC, the first of which is Loom. Loom is pretty cool because it's actually a cloud-hosted collaborative screen recording software. You can use the web browser version or you can download it as a standalone application on your machine. And when you are done recording, it'll take that video and upload it to Loom's website. From there, you can get a quick URL or link that you can then share with whomever needs to watch that video. So think about, imagine you're working with clients and you wanna personalize your videos to them in a one-on-one -on -one type setting. Or maybe you're part of a larger organization, you have colleagues or peers or employees that you work with, you wanna create specific videos just for those viewers. You can create that video very quickly, very easily in Loom. Then you can grab that link and share it out with those users so that they can watch the video. What's cool about that is they can interact with the content, they can provide feedback, leave comments, use emojis, things of that nature. Now for my fellow YouTubers out there who wanna use Loom, you will have to go to the Loom website and then download the movie file to your computer before you can then re-upload it to YouTube. Now, the last option I'll talk about before we get into the demo is Canva. Did you know that Canva has its own screen recording studio where you can record your screen and yourself at the same time? I literally just learned this yesterday and I'm gonna give you a demo on how to use that right now. So the first thing you'll wanna do is go to Canva's website, sign in, and then we're gonna start with a brand new video project. So at the top search bar, I'm just gonna type in video and we'll do the 1080p version. And then we will start with a blank video template. Once we're in our template, we're gonna on the left side, click on uploads and you'll see this option for record yourself. Click on that. This will bring you into the Canva recording studio. And now you can see me in the bottom left. This is the MacBook webcam picking me up and on the right side you'll see these options you can record either just your screen just your camera or your camera and your screen right down here is where you can pick your camera and pick your microphone we'll leave those as the default and then we're going to click on camera and screen and from here you can either pick your entire screen you can pick a specific window or if you're in a browser like chrome you can pick a specific tab within Chrome itself. So just as a quick demo and example, I'm gonna pick my video outlines document in Google Docs. We will pretend for a moment that I'm delivering a recording on this. 
So I've selected that as the screen I want to share. I'm going to come back to Canva and click on record. We will get our three second countdown timer. And now we are ready to go. We are reading out on this document and we can come back here and manipulate it. We can scroll up and down. We can talk through all the amazing things of this document and just deliver whatever content we need to deliver. Once we're done, we can come back to Canva and we can simply hit done and then save and exit. What this will now do is pull in both the background B-roll of the screen recording and the floating talking head into a single document that you can then manipulate, you can resize, you can trim out some of the bad takes, or you can simply export it. So from here, what I would recommend doing is adjusting the layers, making sure that your floating talking head is in front of your background B-roll. You can move your floating talking head wherever you like, and you can resize it. And then of course you will want to resize your background B-roll. And as long as you're happy with the position and where everything is lined up, you can then come into share, download, and then you can download it as an MP4 file. So that MP4 file is now saved to my downloads. I've just moved it to my desktop and let's take a look. So here's that full file. with the floating talking head off to the left and the primary document that we are creating our video about in the background. So for all you existing Canva users out there that want to give this a shot, I'd recommend giving it a go. All right, so let me show you the demo for QuickTime Player because for a lot of Mac OS users, this is going to be where you get started on screen recording. Now you can quickly find your QuickTime Player here in your applications, or you can do command space to get to your spotlight search and just type in quick and you will get to QuickTime Player. Now you'll see this box pop up, but over here on the top left, we're going to do two things. Step one is new screen recording. And then once we're all set there, we're going to do new movie recording. So click on new screen recording. You'll see at the bottom, you have some options. These three icons on the left, you can ignore those. These are mostly for just taking screenshots. These two in the middle are for screen recording. So this is what we're going to want to pick. I'm going to pick record entire screen but you can actually use the lasso tool to record just a specific snippet of the screen if you don't want to record the full thing. Then we're going to go into our options and just make sure I'm saving it to our desktop. I'm going to leave the countdown timer to none because I don't want there to be a countdown. And then we're going to stick with our MacBook Pro microphone for our audio. Then we'll hit record. And then you'll notice this icon here on the top. This is letting us know that QuickTime is now recording our entire screen. So that is step one. Step two now is to get our floating talking head. And the way you do that is you come over to file and you click on new movie recording. This is going to pull up the webcam on my MacBook. I'm simply going to resize this because it is way too big. We'll go all the way down here. And this is now our floating talking head. You can move this all around wherever you like. But let me show you one other feature you're going to want to select. So let's imagine for a moment we're going back and we're going to do a screen recording for this document. But you'll notice my floating talking head is now missing. It is hidden behind this document. So what you'll want to do is bring it back and you'll come to view and hit float on top. And what this will enable is that even if you click in this document or anywhere else outside of the document, the floating talking head will remain. So you'll definitely want to make sure that that is enabled. And then of course, just make sure that this is placed elsewhere. So it's not getting in the way of the background text. Now, once you're feeling good about your recording and you want to stop it, all you have to do is click up here to stop the recording. We can minimize this since we no longer need it. And we actually don't need this talking head anymore. So we'll click that. So let's just take a look at the video now that it's saved on our desktop. So here's what it would look like, right? We've got our background, we've got our talking head, everything looks great. But now you might be asking, how do you actually change the size of the floating talking head to be either a circle or a horizontal rectangle? And how do you add some embellishments around the border and colors? Let me show you how to do that next. So we're gonna start back with QuickTime once again. We're going to follow a lot of the same steps. We're going to start with a new screen recording. We're going to adjust our options here 
I'm gonna turn the microphone off in this case because I don't want any audio associated with the background screen recording. Then we will just simply hit record. And now we are recording our screen once again. We'll come back up here once again to new movie recording. And we will simply resize this. And then we'll select our microphone input to be our MacBook Pro microphone or whichever microphone you want to use for your project. And we're going to hit the record button. And the reason for this is we want to associate the audio that it's picking up with the actual talking head movie file. This is going to come in handy later on when we're in our video editor. So you can see it is recording our audio. I'm going to minimize this. And then we're going to pretend for a moment we're back in our document. We're delivering on our tutorial. We're talking about this document. We're providing all this value. Once we're done and we're ready to wrap up, you'll simply once again hit this button up here to stop the recording. That's going to save just the screen recording, right? We do not have the floating talking head, which is by design. It's just this document. And then we are going to save our floating talking head. So from here, we're going to stop recording and then we're going to go file, save, and we're going to save this to our desktop. And this is going to be our A role. So we're going to name it A underscore role underscore zero one. And since this is our screen recording, we're going to name this B underscore role underscore zero one. So now we have both of our A roll and our B roll ready to go. We're going to pull those into our video editing software. In my case, I'm going to use CapCut. We'll do a brand new project. We'll import both of those files right here. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to add some of those additional flourishes and embellishments to the talking head so that it stands out a little bit more. So the first thing we do is we pull in our B roll and then we pull in our A-roll on top of it. Now I'm just gonna trim out the parts of the B-roll that we don't need, because remember our screen recording is really meant to be talking about this document, and I'll shorten up our A-roll as well. Now what I'm about to show you might seem a little bit complicated at first, but I would encourage you for anyone who's in CapCut or a similar video editing tool is experiment and try out these steps for yourself. The more you do it, the more fluid you become, it becomes super easy over time. And this is a great way of adding some additional polish and like I said, character and flair to your little floating talking head that you'll have in your videos. Now I'm also going to include in this project a background that we'll use to put behind the floating talking head to create that little background color that you guys have noticed. So we'll come into my video assets and we're gonna pick this background. This is gonna be a crumpled paper white background and I'll show you how we use this to create some cool dynamic colors. So I'm going to grab that background. I'm going to place it between my A roll and my B roll. Now, step one here is to select your A roll and we need to go to our mask option here on the top right. And then we can do rectangle from here. We can resize this just like so to get our rectangle shape going. Scroll down a little bit to rounded corners. I like 16. And then we're gonna pick our background. We will resize this to make it a little bit bigger. And we'll do the same exact process on our background. We'll click on mask and then rectangle. And then we will make this just slightly bigger than our floating talking head. So you may need to experiment a little bit with this. We're also gonna do rounded corners of 16. And we're gonna do one point of feather. And let me just show you what this looks like without anything in the background. So there's our floating talking head and you can see this sort of white blurred background behind it. The next thing we'll do if we wanna add some color to that is with that background selected, come up to adjustments and then just change the temperature or the tint to whatever you like. So in my case, I changed the temperature all the way up to give it this sort of orange, dark yellow. 
or we could change it all the way down to give it a blue. So you can mix and match and play with these however you like. I personally like this orange-ish color, so we'll stick with that. So now it's still too big and it's in the center of the screen. We need to be able to resize it and move it in the right position. So what we'll do next is we're gonna select both our A-roll and our background. We're gonna make a compound clip out of both of those. So you can right click and you create compound clip and that makes it into a single track in your project. Now from here, it's very easy to resize it. You can simply change the scale right here or you can just click and drag from one of the corners. And then what we'll do is we can click and drag to move it as well. So if we want it on the bottom right, you can move it right over here. And now let's see what this looks like with our background back in place. So here's the final product. We have our B-roll screen recording in the background that the talking head on the bottom right is talking through. We have it a rectangular talking head with an orange glow in the background. And this is pretty much what I do with all of my screen share tutorials. So hopefully this was helpful. I know there's a lot of steps involved, but like I said, give it a shot, try it out, experiment, create your own shapes if you want. You can do a circular shape as well. But let me know what questions you guys have in the comments below. And if you try any of these tips out in any of your future videos, be sure to let me know. I would love to take a look and give you a high five. So that'll be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.